With this video, we're going to begin talking a little bit about some of the GIMP plugins that you can work with. To this point, I've only really been showing you as far as working with GIMP, but not actually adding in any plugins. GIMP by itself, biggest pro is that it's very lightweight. However, one of the drawbacks is, is you don't have a lot of the plugins that may come with a software package such as Photoshop. Again, however, to reemphasize, you're making a trade-off here. It's either you know free to use or you're paying between $20 and $40 to have all of the plugins already pre-installed in a program such as Photoshop. So where do you find plugins for GIMP? Well, again, age-old Google search, you know, GIMP plugins. You'll often find some type of article. The article that I grabbed is, you know, the top 10 uh, GIMP plugins of 2023. So I'm going to take you through just a couple of these just to show you the process here. Now, before you download, uh, just a friendly reminder, number one, just because there's a plugin doesn't mean you need to download it and install it. Be intentional in what you need in a plugin. So for example, if you're working with a lot of uh, photography as far as raw file types, yes, then the one that I'm going to demo here in a moment, this raw therapy, may be a good choice for you. However, if you're more on the graphic design side and you're not actually having to edit photographs that are coming off of a camera, you may not need this plugin or this additional install. Remember, the more plugins you add to a software package such as GIMP, the more bloated it gets, the longer it will take it to open whenever you double click on it. But also too, you're going to start taking up more disk space. The other big important part to remember whenever you're working with GIMP plugins though is to make sure that you run your security scan whenever you download a plugin, especially if it's not from any type of, you know, article type of website. Remember, this is open source software, so really anybody can write a plugin and pass it off as a plugin. This can get a little bit iffy as far as downloading and installing, where you could install something dangerous onto your computer. So let's go ahead here. I'm going to start off and talk a little bit about uh, raw therapy here. So raw therapy deals with the raw file image type whenever you're working inside of, you know, whenever you're taking photos with a camera. Now raw therapy is actually external, but one of the things that happens whenever you're editing photographs that are coming off of a camera is normally, yes, we did work, we do work in external programs. And then once we're done editing, we can tell it, hey, open it directly into our software imaging programs such as GIMP and finalize our edits. So one thing is, is raw therapy actually has its own website that you can download. So you can see you have Linux, Windows, and Mac. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the Windows download. And you can see here that I'm going to have to extract. But then inside here, you've got an install. So I'm going to go ahead, because I've used raw therapy before, I'm going to just tell it to install. I'm not going to worry about running my double check here. So yes, and next, and yes, yes, okay. But I wanted to just show you real quick the install process here. All right, so let me go ahead here and we are going to grab, there we go. All right, so this is raw therapy and it can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, probably the big things you're gonna wanna be careful of and pay attention to is for instance, over on the left hand side here, you have your navigation areas. And from here, you have a lot of different options as far as what you can work with, as far as working inside of folders here. So for instance, if you double click on a folder, it may take a moment, but as you can see, it'll open up all of the files within that, fo that folder for you. You can then double click on a specific folder and you can begin to work with as far as each of the different elements are concerned. So for instance, again, I'll switch to nature. You can see that a lot of my nature scans pop up here. Now you're not actually doing anything on this side yet on the left hand side. The right hand side is where you're going to do any sort of photography edits to the raw file type. So for instance here, let me go ahead here. I'm going to grab this nature right here and I'm going to double click. 
Notice how the interface is now changed here. You now have uh, tracking as far as your RGB values in the image, but also too, it's a little hard to see over here, but across the top here, you have different photo editing options, and then you can change as far as what you wanna work with with each of the different elements here. So I can change the exposure, the shadow and the highlights. I can add, you know, a vignette filter as far as the actual graphic is concerned. So I'm gonna actually turn that on to record that. Maybe tweak a little bit, change the roundness, so on and so forth. Again, I'm making changes to this graphic that I eventually assume I'm going to come in and actually tweak it, finalize it inside of GIMP. So if I go ahead here and let's see here, if I do also, so I turned on to record some of my changes to my shadows and highlights here. It's actually kind of, can I deepen the shadows just a hair? I want this to be a little bit deeper. There we go. And then under exposure, maybe if I come under, oh, let's see, saturation. There we go, just a tweak there. Now, and again, photo editing as far as photography goes, whole nother beast as far as uh, digital photography goes. One of the things though that we are going to want to do though in something like this is you now want to actually export it to GIMP. And that's where down all the way here at the bottom and it's kind of on the lower right hand side, you have three little buttons down here where you can actually save your changes. Um, you can put it in the processing queue and you can edit in an external editor. However, you need to check to make sure that your external editor is set up correctly. This is one of those things, again, you're working with free software, so you've got to do a little extra work versus working with something like Photoshop. To make sure that everything's set up correctly, all the way on the left-hand side, all the way down at the bottom, you have these four buttons here, but the one you really want is the preferences. You need to double check to make sure in the general tab that your external editor is actually set to GIMP. You may have to click on your folder navigation and navigate to where you have GIMP installed. You don't need to go into any of the subfolders, just the actual GIMP folder here. So I'll say open and I'll say okay. As a side note, in case anybody is interested, you can also see here that you also have Adobe Photoshop that should you be using Photoshop. Though honestly, normally Photoshop has this built directly into it whenever you try to import a camera raw file format. I personally don't see why I would want to be using an external piece of software. So GIMP is our primary concern here. I'm going to say OK. And now what I can do is come back down to that little artist's uh, paintbrush and, you know, kind of piece there or you can do control E and I'm going to go ahead and tell it to open in GIMP. And yes, I'm going to tell it to allow that. This is one of the little quips though I found with raw therapy. It always asks me if I want to uninstall. I tell it no. GIMP's going to go through a couple of things. And then over here, I'll bring it into the center here. You can see that it's asking me to import. I want to keep what I, all the work that I did here. So we're going to, keep it. And now it's opened inside of GIMP and allows me to make my edits as I need. So that's a really nice use of something external that can add a little bit more power into GIMP versus say just relying on something like the colors drop down menu. I was able to take that raw photography footage and import it in. So that's working with an external element inside of GIMP. However, you also have several other options. So if I come back in, for instance, and looking at some of the other options in here, there are 
tools that can actually be imported and placed into GIMP as far as the workflow. As you work with plugins, though, one thing you're going to see is oftentimes, uh, you know, there's kind of warnings as far as, hey, this hasn't been updated in a while, but it should work. Uh, so that's something to take into consideration. Now, the installing of your GIMP plugins, though, that is actually something that even in Photoshop, you're going to have to do the same deal. So one of the things that you're going to have to do is you are going to have to actually come in and look for the plugin folder. Now to find this inside of GIMP, that's where we have to go back in. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to need to navigate to those preferences, which is located under your edit dropdown. Now in previous examples here, we haven't really dived too far into this as far as the systems uh, preferences are concerned. What it's actually showing here is you need to go into the files and to this point we've kind of kept this collapsed and you can see here under plugins. Now the plugins here you can see like I put my raw therapy in there but what we're looking for is these plug-in folders here. So I'm actually going to navigate over under so it's telling me I need to go to the C drive I am going to go to program files. We're going to go under GIMP2 here. We're going to go to my lib and we're going to then go into GIMP. We're going to go to 2.0 and there are my plugins. And you can actually see already, you might recognize some of the plugins already here as far as the special effects and stuff. Like there's cartoon, there's the blur, etc. So let's go ahead and take a look at, I pulled liquid rescale. So this provides kind of, you know, seam carving. So let's go ahead and download this and I'll show you what you have to do as far as going through an actual plugin and moving it so that it can actually come into GIMP here. Once again, they've got some different options. I'll go ahead and choose Windows. Now this is where, yes, you're going to have to do some reading. So here we have standalone installation and it's for GIMP version 6.1 or newer. However, they also have GIMP 2.8 or newer and you can download from here. We're actually on GIMP 2.10 so we probably want to pick the most recent one here and it's going to run here and there we go. And I'm going to double click, it's going to warn me, we're going to say yes. Now, sometimes you may have some issues as far as the download is concerned, and this is where things can get a little tricky. So it's actually not finding, and that's okay. It's still going to warn me. I'm going to tell it, yes, I accept. And now what I'm going to do is this is where it becomes important. So it's yelling at me, telling me that it could not find a GIMP installation. So I'm going to go ahead here and browse and this is where kind of you know file na navigation and things like that kind of comes into play here so I'm gonna go ahead and find that GIMP 2 folder here that it's like okay you don't have GIMP installed actually I do have GIMP installed and we're gonna tell it install and I'm gonna tell it to finish and now let's go ahead and see what it installed for us here so we'll go to program files we're gonna get Actually, what it should have done for us is go under GIMP 2.0 plugins. And it should have installed this for us somewhere in here. Now, one other thing to point out to you, too, is whenever you do an install like this, very, very often, uh, you're going to have to restart GIMP. Uh, it's not going to just automatically appear here. So I'm going to X out of GIMP real quick and let's go ahead and reopen it to see if our install worked. Now, another note on this is yes, you can come in. Uh, I'm going to tell it no. Actually, we can close out raw therapy right now and just be done with that. 
So now under the layer drop down menu here, there's your liquid rescale. So that will allow you to scale and change your different layers. But this is what I was talking about earlier in the video. This is where, you know, again, you start tacking on and piling on all of these different plugins. You're now getting to a point whereby, okay, I'm adding in these plugins, you know, oh, I think I might need this in the future, but now you're starting to bog down the program. You can also tell it's a plugin, just as a reminder, you're going to have little cogs next to it versus the built-in elements such as the cropping, the scaling of the layer, etc., where they have their own individual icons. One other thing I wanted to point out, since this is starting to get a little long here, is yes, you do have the capabilities under filter. You could write your own scripts if you wanted to. Uh, one language that GIMP recognizes is Python. Is this a requirement? Absolutely not. But if you know Python and you want to look at the documentation as far as making your own uh, plugins, that's something you might want to consider in the future. So again, the big things to take away is, you know, review what you need as far as a plugin is concerned. Also, you know, you may have to try a few. Some of them are outdated. But outside of that, uh, you know, you can choose and really get GIMP to a point that is similar to Adobe Photoshop without having to pay the Adobe Photoshop price.